live. So if everybody can hear us, we are live. Okay. All right. So we're taking back old school for play by play. I'm sure you noticed the different set. Um, and the reason, uh, go ahead and test Ryan. Can I hear you? Oh man, I can hear you loud and clear. How do I sound? Okay. Yeah. So, so the set's definitely different. We're up here at IGL's training facility in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm going to be speaking at this event. And so I'm here. And then Ron, where are you at today? I'm actually down here in Enterprise, Alabama, man. My mom had knee surgery, so I decided to come down, be a good son, check on her, see, you know, what what, what errands I could run for. Um, but, you know, business don't stop. We're still, right. we're still going. That's right. So today you're going to notice that we don't have our lower thirds and a few of our graphics and stuff, but it's going to go on like normal outside of that. Uh, we got Chris Wilkins on with So Fresh and So Clean. Clean. There it is. Okay. And uh, we're going to be talking to him about a bunch of stuff. Um, all detailing. Hang on one second, Ryan. I want to do one more thing here. And um, we're going to be talking to him about detailing and, and all kind of stuff. Let's see. And it's going to. All detailing. Hang on one second, Ryan. I want to do one more thing. I gotta pick. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Uh, <laughs> well, if we wouldn't have it any other way, this is what this is what being on the road is all about. You gotta find, you know, solve problems as you go. I mean, detailers know if nothing's ever perfect, and, uh, and and you know what, that range true today. Anyways, so we got Chris Wilkins on today. And we're going to talk to him about detailing and family and all this cool stuff that we're doing with our MVP series. But first, what I want to talk about is a post that he made. You know, he's a cool guy in the room. He's always just dressed so clean and nice. But there's depth there, man. This guy's smart. And oh, uh, I, saw, I saw a post that he made of his goals. And, um, and um, okay, I, I didn't know if you had it. So I, I saw a post that he made of his goals. And he's just checking them off the list. So he had wrote down all of his goals on there. Hey, did you see it, Ryan? Yeah, I did. I was actually looking at it earlier. Uh, he okay. became a um, a shop, a detail shop owner. Check. Yeah. Uh, he had, um, you know, he wants to expand his business into multiple different areas. He's already knocked tent and PPF. Check those off. I think uh, luxury cars coming up you know yeah. and, and he and he definitely wants to uh, help the community and so but, man that's it's, you, it's, know, you know what's important about that is that he actually wrote the goals down right. um that, so in my live on wednesday um in the mvp group i was talking about you know it's one thing to have lofty goals it's one time to it's one thing to think about things that you want to do in the future and and have these ideas but it's necessary that you write those down and your goals should be something that's measurable. So you don't want to say, well, I just want to be the best detail shop around. Okay. Right. Cause there's nothing to measure that off of. So when you think about it, if you say, okay, my goal is to be the best detail shop around, you should have something to measure that off of. And that should be, um, you know, whether it be income level, Hey, they brought me a beer, true IGL fashion. I got a <laughs> Yingling lager. <laughs> oh, I love some good old Yingling. I actually, I was working yeah. at a Chinese restaurant and I told um, one of the flight students that it was Chinese beer. I was only 19. Yeah. I had no idea. And I read the can America's oldest brewery. Oh, I felt yeah. like a silly goose. But <laughs> So anyways, but, but listen, so the goals, I want to talk about this because it's important to me. And, and so when you talk about, you know, having these goals, it's important that you write them down. And then when you do a, when you set a goal like this, it shouldn't be something like that you're already close to obtaining. It should be far enough out that it kind of makes you chuckle a bit when you put it on paper. It makes you a little bit nervous when you write it down and be like, I don't know, man, that's, that's pretty far. I don't know how I'll get there. All right. Then. You take that goal and you divide it up and you say, what are the things that I have to do, change, improve, get rid of, whatever that is, break it down. And then that's how you obtain the goal. And then you measure it. You don't just say at the end of the year, I'm going to check and see if I've done it. It's daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Then at the end of the year, you say, okay, we're here or we're real damn close. It's awesome, man. I really feel like, you know, I, I have not done this myself. Uh, so I feel like I need to use that dry erase board back at the yeah. office, man, and, and and put those things out there um, so I can make sure I can start checking mine off because I know what I want to do. Well, I know where I want to be. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm making those steps, but I, I, I can see the uh, the benefit of having them actually written down. Put the, put the target on the wall, something to shoot at every day. And we have goals. I mean, with the software, we have goals. Um, and we have our, our daily signups, you know, and we do what I mean, we have a meeting every morning, right? So you yep. got goals and it's what are we going to do to get to that? You know, because we have an overall total. Here's how many signups we want in a year. 
Okay, well, then we break that down to a daily goal. And then every single day we talk about it in our meeting. We say, yep. how are we sure. going to get our sales today? And so that's what we do. And so that's that's why it's important. And I'd love to see detailers making that transition and just saying, instead of saying, I want to be the best polisher out there or I want to be the best detail guy or whatever. Like, let's think a little bit bigger. Let's get a little bit broader and let's let's do a better job of of helping our business. And it tra- and that this conversation translates right into what I'm doing up here for IGL. And that's given the million dollar detail presentation. Yeah. Okay. And it's and it's basically that. It's, you know, it's how we got to doing a million dollars and we broke it down with marketing, with sales, with employees, with, you know, customer retention, those kind of things. How do we how did we get to a million dollars? And that's what we used. You know, we set a target on the wall. We broke it down in these sections. And then within each section, it's what do we got to do to get there? So is finding a trophy wife too, too, um, too uh, <laughs> unobtainable at this point? Should I leave that for next year? Okay, here's what you do. You put a okay. picture of my wife on your wall. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'll make sure to, to yeah, do that. So I'll just yeah. put it over the one that's already there. Right. Yeah. 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 Put a picture of my, no, that's what you do. You know? You're know. right. Yeah. yeah. Believe and achieve, man. Open another checking account. Find somebody to deposit a lot of money into it. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Your, your wife's got a sister, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She does. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, All right, man. So no listen, while you're down there, you know, inspiring millionaires, I'm over here taking care of my mom, visiting family. What is Chris yeah. Wilkins up to? You know, that's, that's the question. Well, um, let's, let's bring before him we on. Get, Oh, yeah, you want to go ahead and do that because we did start lighting up. So we were going to tease the hack first. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Tease the hack. All right. So, Dustin, uh, I know that you at the shop have just received a new instrument and it's to uh, it's a paint gauge. And ultimately, yep. you know, that's going to tell you what the uh, the level of thickness on paint, clear yep. coat, um, you know, how many mils there is. And oh, did I? Did I yes, hack it yes, up? dude. Yes. Yeah, so we got to wait on this. So anyways, we're, we're hacked. We're, we're, we got a new uh, paint gauge in this, in the mill. And so we're going to show you guys uh, a little bit about it. That's going to be our hack. It's not a hack. It's an actual tool that does this job, but that's our way to, of knowing how thick paint is. And we'll go through that. So, cool. um, but yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and bring Chris Wilkins on. Let's talk to him a bit and see what I uh, see what he's been up to. All right. What's up, big dog? Hey, what's up, guys? Is that the office in the new shop? Yeah. Oh, look oh at that. man, That's that boss. looks great. That looks great. Y'all getting settled in? Everything kind of situated? Yeah, so I got my plotter behind me. Uh, this is the front windows that were just wrapped. And then we got the wall of certifications back there. Dude, love it. Area. love it. What's up and- with that ceiling? What's on the ceiling up there? So uh, let, let me just flip the camera if I can. Yeah, and okay. uh, so we had, instead of a traditional ceiling, we had them do wooden planks. Love that. Wow. Yeah. And then in the shop area, they're, uh, they're red. Dude, that is That's awesome. awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Who's that? Is that Mama Wilkins coming in? No, that's one of my employees. Oh, okay. All right. He's uh, going dude, to work. Oh, I couldn't even see. I couldn't see. So your um man, your shop looks good. How long have you been in that shop? Uh, I know when we had you on last, you were, I mean, you were literally just getting set up. You've been in there what a few months now? Uh yeah, about two months. Awesome. Awesome, man. How, how are you, you it, enjoying it? You know, not always being out on the road, having a place where your tools are always there. Yeah, so that's been nice. Um I'm usually only here for coding jobs, uh, corrections or like level two details or tint or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, for the past two months, we've been using a digital marketing firm that has been pumping out ceramic jobs for us like crazy. So I've been here pretty frequently. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. That's where you want to be. So, but you still offer road services. Um, you're just trying to transition back to the exactly shop. yeah i have two mobile trucks and two employees i'm looking to hire a third one um yes, but ideally yeah like ideally the one employee is in the one truck he's out on his own the other one can fill my truck and then i can work from here and with season starting to you know be here uh we're booked out like two three weeks right now so it's starting nice. to uh Man, get fantastic. crazy so before yeah. we dig super deep into detailing, because, you know, listen, we all want to talk about detailing and I can't wait to dive in there. Let's talk a little bit about things that you do outside of detailing. I like this series. We've been able to kind of show 
what detailers do uh, outside of just, you know, washing and polishing cars. Um, so, you know, hobbies, you got any kind of hobbies or, or, you know, talents or anything that you do outside of work? Yes. So, um, I mean, I know that I'm, I'm naturally blessed to have such, you know, these great looks, but these <laughs> muscles don't, they don't come on their own. No, I like to work out. Um, I've been working out for like 10 years. But ever since I started the business like six years ago, that kind of had to take a back seat because yeah. I'm just hustling all day, um, working out. And then we have three boys, so they all play sports and we're at the baseball field like four days a week to be with, with, with their sports. So when I'm not here, I'm usually there or I yeah. might get one day off a week to like work out at home with the wife and. But, you know, and, and listen, people don't understand. So we have three boys and, I, and a girl. Um, uh -huh. And and so the, the the two middle boys, they play baseball. The oldest one plays football. And now Demi, which is my daughter, she's uh, in uh, dance. So okay. there's always something going on. And I actually coach the two middle ones baseball team. And uh, I tell you, man, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot with managing the business and doing that. And then also – uh, I can relate to the working out. I'm training for a uh, triathlon right now. So okay. uh, lots of running and biking and, and of course, hitting the traditional style workouts uh, a few days a week, um, toning up. But And then, Ryan, what's your, what is your workout regimen? Since I know you can relate. Uh, no, I, I'm to so, I was going to jump in there whenever Chris mentioned, uh, you know, that he, he works out as well, because I also, like your wife, watch his wife work out, um, uh, you know, on <laughs> Facebook. So, I mean, I feel like that's pretty <laughs> – for, you know, it's full time job keeping up with all, you know, but yeah, I, I got to do what I got to do. I, I do a good job trying to give her some recognition on Facebook. Yeah, uh, snapping some pictures of her when she's not looking. Yeah, that's so, what, <laughs> she's killing it, bro. So Ryan's definitely the our wives fanboy. Like he he's all up in there, uh, all up on their posts, trying to you know watch and. Uh, it's it's this ongoing joke. I just want to see my... everyone succeed, you know, Dustin. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I really and I want to motivate and you know it's that's, that's part right. of Oh <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. So working out with the kids and all that, I mean, look, I, I don't know, I can definitely relate. What about uh nicknames? What about I mean, I just want to get personal. I want to hear what Chris Wilkins is all about outside of detailing. Huh. <laughs> Honestly, I, I mean I'm just like a natural born hustler, like yeah. I'm so, you know, used to just like, I'm from Philly. So I'm used to a fast pace, fast environment, fast life. You know, that's kind of how I've always lived. And uh, ever since I matured and calmed down from like 29 to now I'm 35. Um, honestly, I've just been like engulfed in the business. Like I started out by myself out of a van and just, you know, day by day, just continuing to grind and hustle, you know, no matter what it takes, working seven days a week. Um, we own a second business as well. I think we talked about that before the home watch business. It, we, we, yeah. we watch people's houses like seasonal oh, yeah, while they're yeah. gone. Yes. So, so I kind of transferred that over to Sarah because I'm just so busy with this and this is our main moneymaker. So, uh, sure. we have that. And then with the three kids and the two dogs, I mean, we don't get much time. We get, if I'm lucky, I get Sunday off. And yep. I don't want to do nothing. I want to keep the blinds closed. I want to watch TV on the couch all day, play in your room, have fun. You know, I, I want to just have a chill day. So who uh, exactly calls you Daddy Snacks is, uh, is what I want to know. I, I was, I was hoping you did it, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> so my, my – uh, I used to – my friend Mike um, from Philly, I don't know. He's just funny like that. He'd come up with, like, weird nicknames <laughs> for everybody. And so my last name's Wilkins and he would call me Wilkes daddy. And then he came up with Wilkes daddy snacks. And then, so I don't <laughs> and know. It just shortened it up to daddy snacks. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Well, Hey, yeah. I like you can be daddy snacks and I'll be the snack daddy. How about that? And we'll we uh, start, start, a, start an eighties rap group. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Uh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, man. I, I tell you, it's cool to hear about this stuff because you know, these guys that, you know, everybody that's out there, hustling and, and working their tail off i mean they can relate they know that that time's limited like you said sunday's our only day off and 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 that's exactly the way i feel and and look my wife makes me feel guilty about even taking sunday off man she's a she's even worse than i am we're like you know we're we're, we're awful for each other in that aspect because both of us want to go 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 so like uh you know it's it's rough sometimes 
But all right, so coming around to the detailing side of things, because that's what we're here for. Uh, Got to know, how did you come up with the name of your company? So uh, music is like my heartbeat. I'm a music guy. And yeah. uh, when I first started, it was just Chris's custom detailing. And I had a little cheesy business card and, you know, and I was like, eh, it sounds kind of amateur. And so after like a month, I was just singing in the shower one day. This song, So Fresh and So Clean, came on by Outcast. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? This sounds, that has a ring to it for a detailing business. And I asked Sarah, I'm like, hey, what do you think of that? And she's like, yeah, that works. And I was like, all right. And we ran with it. Oh, we love it. We love it. So So where were you at that? Ain't nobody dope as me. Is that what you're saying? I was singing the chorus for sure. (laughs) But, you know, it's meaningful to me because like music is I love music. That's like my escape. So that is one thing right there. Like the gym and music, you know, music puts me in in my zone kind of, you know, I, I, I like music. They used to call me Big Daddy Fat Sacks back in the day, too. You know, so I, I know about the, the nickname. So uh, now when you were getting started, what was the biggest struggle that you, you know, that you had to go through? Um, uh, probably a, a big learning curve. I mean, I was only detailing for maybe four to six months before I started my business. So I hadn't always been a detailer but I've always been extremely anal and just like OCD with everything. I used to fold up towels and place them over my seats in the car and put them on the floor. I used to make people take their shoes off and kick their feet before getting into the car. (laughs) And so I was just always crazy like that. And um, it, it was just my calling. I mean, I got fired from a job for a misunderstanding. I took a detailing job. It seemed like a relaxed kind of cool environment. But it turned out the guy had no money. He was writing me bad checks. And I was like, this ain't going to work. So I had to threaten him every two weeks. Like, yo, bro, come up with my money or I'm not coming in today. He'd come up with the money. And then through that process, I just made my own uh, business cards on Vistaprint. And I started passing them out, placing them on cars, like right in the trim in between the windows. And, you know, people, people just started responding to it. I mean, here in Naples, there's such a a high end, you know, luxury car market here that there's no shortage of cars. I mean, I showed you that Lamborghini we have in here now, (laughs) and there's an orange one right across the street, as well as like a whole bunch of others. It's just crazy. I mean, you know, know, not just anybody could take that opportunity. It takes a hustler. It takes somebody that's want that, that, well, first of all, that has to, you know, Um, you you know, it's time to pay the bills and rents due. And, and you know what, the the way you do that is get out there and hustle. So I think that speaks, you know, to that, that um, mindset that you have that says, okay, this dude's not paying me. I can't get my check from, I got to do something. Yeah. It's, it's all chips in. Let's do it. I used to go to like the most high end exclusive neighborhoods and park my car take a stack of cars and go door to door, house by yep. house, putting them in the mailbox, even though, the, you know, that's technically illegal. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. So, so then only the illegal if you get caught. <laughs> well, the post office people would deliver mail and they were throwing them out mailbox by mailbox. And I'm like, oh, no. I'd walk back down the road and be like, you got to be kidding me. And so yeah, then I had people ridiculous. calling my phone. They're like, you know, you came onto my property and left a car. Yeah. And I was like, Look, I'm not trying to intrude on your property. I'm just trying to start a business here. And, you know, they're giving giving me a hard time saying, oh, well, there's other avenues you can take. And I'm like, yeah, well, as a starting business owner, I mean, you know, this seems like the best bet. We just like to call us haters. While I I have you on the phone, are you interested in the detail? (laughs) (laughs) That's my play right there. Well, now that you called me and we're on the phone, are you interested in the detail? (laughs) What's yeah, that over your shoulder that Chris what? keeps catching my eye? Something over your shoulder keeps catching oh, my you, eye over there. You, what you is that? that thing? Oh, yeah. That's uh, the trophy. Uh, is that the SDC mobile detailer of the year trophy? Yeah, let me get that thing. I keep it right there on that uh, on nice. that shelf. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. We did spot it. Look at that detail book logo. Man, those are some fire trophies. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Awesome, you know, that dude. just sets it off, too. That, that, does. that was that's a good so weekend. Rad. That was a great weekend. That was, that was fun. So speaking of that, are you going to be going to mobile tech? Are you going to make it down? Oh yeah. Yeah. We already got our tickets. Fantastic. Now I think it's going to be a great show, man. We've got, uh, I know we're, we're bringing the heat. IGL is coming with a hell of a setup. We're going to be right there beside them. Um, And uh, I tell you, man, I think everybody's itching with SEMA kind of going the way it did. And um, I I think the, you know, mobile tech is just going to be, it's just going to be lit man. it's going to be great. Yeah. 
I wanted to go to SEMA because we've never been there. And uh, yeah. once everyone started pulling out, I figured if that was probably going to be the majority. So we didn't do. But since uh, I'm here in Florida, Mobile Tech is like oh, three and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. And I like the way Mobile Tech was set up last year, too, because the Southern Detailers Conference was a little different. They had it set up where education day is from like eight to one and then they don't they don't open the conference up until then so this way people can't just linger back and forth throughout and this way you're getting a big influx of people that are all spending money and you know i think it's a lot more beneficial to the vendors oh abs- absolutely it is it is yeah, yeah. the way that they, they, they did kind of jack that up and and then so it really you didn't know when people were going to be there and then like myself we have a booth but yet yeah I'm, I'm teaching in the classroom so now i'm separated from my booth i'm separated from the people fortunately yeah. enough i got ryan and he's okay with talking to customers and stuff but you know there's he's yeah. no dustin jackson so <laughs> oh, that's true that's true <laughs> I, I, I try my best every day yeah, ryan's know. awesome Look, my ryan's person awesome. says what would dustin do so you know there you well, that's, go. Yeah, as, that's, as how, should, that's my you know? mindset <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now, Chris, I know when you first started out, you probably didn't have all the, you know, proper equipment that you needed. It's something that you obtained over time. Yeah. Did you, uh, you also walked away from SDC, a big winner, not only of a trophy, but you won yourself a little, a uh, nice little polisher too, didn't you? Yeah, that was, that was great. I mean, you know, I got the trophy on Saturday and then Sunday you call, you're like, Hey, I got, you won this polisher. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah. Won the I was like, no polisher. way. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I literally was, thought we were, it, it was your world down there and we were just living in it all just, you know, uh, non-playable characters, NPCs and, and Chris's <laughs> world, dude. It was, uh, it was an amazing weekend, man, but you were a man on a mission. You yeah, know, you, that was a good weekend. I should have, uh, at, at the end of my speech, I should have done the, ain't nobody dope as me and just let uh, everyone like, jump the rest. We would have jumped in there with you, dude. We would have uh, jumped in. We I practice it all nervous. the time. Oh Ooh. my God. I was like shaking. I was sweat. My palms were sweating. My face was probably <laughs> bright red. Oh my God. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. But you did great, man. Nobody knows. So I, I got a question. So we, you, you, you kind of um, mentioned that you had two employees, you know, you got one in the van, one kind of work in the van when you're not in it and you want to hire another one. So what's that like for you? What is hiring detailers? And, uh, you know, obviously you've got a couple of them under your belt. So how does that, how's that been for you? Oh my God. Stress, stress isn't the word. I I mean, we've been, we've had a a listing on indeed for like six months Mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that it was $500 a month. I thought it was free to list. So Sarah's been hiding those invoices from me, but (laughs) I seen it the other day and I'm like, we're paying $500 a month to list this and getting nothing. Absolutely zero in return. The guys I have now are good. They're, they're great. I like them. Um, It's just the people, the people that we're getting for like paying to list that ad is just ridiculous. And so at this point, I mean, I don't really have a choice, but to be booked out for two or three weeks because I just can't, you know, I actually came across a guy the other day who messaged me. He lives somewhere out here in Florida and actually said he'd be willing to relocate and come down here for steady work. So I'm actually going to call him and see, you know, see what happens because I just think that people have this like thought in their head who, who don't know about detailing that think, how does this guy wash his cars? Make $8 yep. an hour or something. Like, I think people just have that in their head, they not do. knowing that like yourself, you could run a million dollar detail shop. I mean, absolutely. It, you yep. know, it's crazy. It's the transition. We're in the golden era of detailing and it's making a transition and hopefully software is, is adding to that. I truly believe that, you know, our software along with the other softwares are helping to make that transition to a professional industry where you can, you know, pay for professional wages, charge professional prices. But let me tell you something about hiring. So I've, I've hired a lot and I've fired a lot over the, the years. Um, I think we're over 30 something employees now um, in, in nice. Louisiana and, and all, but so one thing that I've learned that works best because we use Indeed as well, we use Facebook, but is recruiting. And I approach it like um, Nick Saban r- approaches recruiting players. Is we are always, always on the lookout for new employees. Like anybody that shows drive, I don't care if they know how to detail. I'm going to teach them how to detail. If they yeah. know how to get up and come to work and show up and care about themselves, you can tell by the way somebody looks or dresses if they have those those qualities about them. 
And so I'm like, literally, I was telling Ryan the other day, I, I tried to hire the guy at Jersey Mike's. He's the, uh, he's their manager there. And he's the, he always remembers our order and we, we won't be in for like two weeks. And he'll, he'll, he'll like, as soon as we get there, all right, man, you get this, this, this. And I'm like, dude, so it just, the, you know, those qualities with someone, you just know that they're going to be right. And so like, I'm yes. always asking, always recruiting for employees and I don't, you know, and, and then listen, even if I don't need anybody, I hired somebody uh, two days ago, actually, my dad, hired, my dad hired this guy. We didn't need him. But but when someone shows up at your door and they think and you think that they're going to fit the, you know, uh, fit the need or, or fit the position, then you put them there and you figure it out. Because I promise you that, that they're, they're few and far between when they come. You make room for them, you bring them in and, and the rest works itself out. Yeah. And, and you know, I agree 100 percent. Like I tend to run into people who I might be who would maybe be friendly with outside of work, but uh -huh. like aren't the type of character they don't have the type of characteristics that I'm looking for. Like, you know, the professional look and taking care yeah. of yourself and just showing up on time and good attitude, you know, like those things are important because you could be the best detailer in the world, but if you have a bad attitude or you can't take feedback and things like that, well, then we're not going to get know, very far, you absolutely. know? So, um, so that's one thing that Sarah does that like we implemented a while back was, you know, first off, we do a ride along with somebody. So this way they can see uh, what the day is like, you know, are you going to be able to handle this like job to job, you know, boom out in the heat, you know, so we do that first and pay somebody cash for the day, just for that day. And then if it's a good fit, we go from there, we have them sign paperwork, you know, yep. uh, non-competes and things like that. And then Sarah will do a day of like orientation and just say like, hey, look, these wow. are our expectations. You know, uh, we're here to, to do this and that. We're trying to accomplish this. And, you know, as much as we want to be friendly and all, you know, we're not here to make friends. And, it, you yeah. know, we have a job this to do. It, yeah. You know, and it's like I want to pay my guys good. I want to pay my, you know, starting off like around 18, 20, I would pay somebody yeah. $25 an hour because that's how I would want to be paid. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's been tough. It, you know, the longest person in, I've had this business going on six years, longest mm -hmm. person that's been here is six months. Wow. Oh, wow. Yes. You, um, so, so I've done this honest to God. I've, I've done all of this almost by myself with bits yeah. of help here and there. So imagine if I had a good team, what we could accomplish. So, so let me tell you, um, sorry, let me tell you a little bit about um, how we keep employees for long term. And, and so the way that I run my business is it's our business and it's, listen, we're, we want, you know, we're doing big things. We want to do big things. We want to do stuff that's never been done before and we can't do them without you. So you, they have to buy into what we're doing. And we've done this with software. Ryan knows it. They, like I tell him all the time, dude, this is, this is, this is ours. We're building this together. There's nobody else. There's no page to turn to that's going to give you directions, but you're involved and you control your own destiny. And that's exactly the way I talk to my detailers and, and marketing and whoever else it is, because it's the truth. We're building something that doesn't exist. There's no manual. There's no playbook. We do it every single day. And I need you to buy into this and say, okay, I'm committed long term. You may have to make a sacrifice on the front end. You could probably go somewhere immediately and make a little bit more money. But I promise you, if you stick with me over time, you're going. It's going to catch up, and it has. And I haven't lied to anybody that works for me yet. Every single person that works for me right now is making more than what they did when they start. And, um, and it's just, and it's a snowball and it builds and, and people stick. Um, so just to, you know, that's, that's what I do to keep people around. And, and, and man, we have a bunch of strong willed, strong minded, committed people there. Um, and I'm, I'm actually really the, I'm in the running for, um, software salesman of the year. So, I, you know, <laughs> that, that keeps me absolutely motivated. And, um, of course, you know, uh, I got I, you on a vote. <laughs> I appreciate oh, man, you, buddy. Uh, Dustin can't stand it, dude. Everybody loves yeah. me so much, and it just drives me nuts. But oh, you know, I'm just yeah. a, a young, lovable, huggable type of guy. You know, it's yeah. just uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm I like to be helpful, man. I love you know yeah. watching people take something and you know just elevate themselves with something that I you know can provide just a tool for you to yeah. to do better. And and then then I get to watch it and hear them, you know, they brag about how awesome they're doing, and you know, and it's great. It's it's not a brag. It's, it's literally, you know, it's, it's, it's reality for him. And it just yeah. it feels great, man, to be, be a part of that. Yeah. Like we, we try to pay our guys good. Um, we also do quarterly bonuses. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, every three months we'll meet and you'll get a score from one to 10. And if you're a I one to that. three, you get X amount of dollars. If you're a four to seven, you know, and it's love free it. money. And love on top it. of that, we do incentives. So like if they, if they bring in a customer, uh, they'll get $20. The customer stays oh, with us man, for X dude. amount of time. They'll get another 20. You know what I mean? So they're, yeah. they have, they have the opportunity to, you know, hustle and, and make extra money and just, you know, whatever. And I'm not one of those people where it's like, oh, you've been here for a year. So you're going to get a dollar raise. I'll sure. give you a four dollar raise if you can hustle and bust your ass and, and bang out X amount of jobs in a day, because then That's we right. can, you know, so like, then for we example, grow. we coded this uh, 72 foot yacht uh, for a customer like a few weeks back, we finished it. And uh, he just reached out to us for a quote to do ceramic coat, his Baron airplane. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so um, we ended up getting the job. It's in just two and a half hours away, I think, in Port, yeah. in Port St. Lucie. And um, so I I'm looking forward to that coming up. But that's going to be yeah. on a Sunday. I'm going to have to go up there like Saturday night, work yep. all day Sunday, finish it Monday, drive back. Um, and I got to work on biting my tongue with people yeah. and my, my patients because we almost didn't get the job because of how I responded to it. Um, it Certain customers can be a little funny sometimes, you know, and Sarah said to him, you know, hey, we have to add a travel charge. And he sure. was like, well, I got someone who bid it without travel. And I was like, so instantly it just left like a sour yeah. taste in my mouth. <laughs> and I said, I was like, wait, so let me get this right. We coded your yacht. We have a relationship and you're going to use somebody else because you don't want to pay us a travel charge to drive two and a half hours. Like, sure, and so on. instantly come he on. was like, I don't like your attitude. I'll go <laughs> elsewhere. And I was like, Whoa. I was like, well, I was like, well, look, you were speaking with Sarah prior. I'm like, this is Chris. I'm just trying to find out where we're at here. Like, I'm trying to. I think. Uh, OK, there, there we, go. we go. Yeah, it cut out for a second. I was like, yeah, you know, no I'm problem. trying to just get on the right page, you know, and luckily uh, he accepted our bid. He still <laughs> was willing to hear our bid and he accepted it. But um, that's one of my biggest downfalls is sometimes I just you know, say with the first thing that comes to my mind or how I would normally speak to somebody outside of here. And then that can really come back to bite you in the ass. So just a word of advice for anybody listening to uh, not always go with your first train of thought. No, I, I like to call it eating the shit sandwich. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, sometimes you got to eat the shit sandwich. Sometimes you just yeah. got to say, hey, you know what, right, wrong or indifferent, you're the customer. And, and we, you know, we got to find common ground to work through. Now, it's not saying let somebody abuse you or, or a customer just always win. even. But, but you know, at the end of the day, um, that customer is going to scream, scream if they like to work, but they're going to scream really loud if they don't or if, if, if there's an issue. So it's just yeah. not worth it to, for, for your pride to take over to take over and then yeah so i've got a lot of learning to do with uh, uh employees um I, i'm great with our customers you know but uh, dustin will tell you you know i won't think that you know i'm thinking i'm doing exactly asking this the way i should be asking you know um and, and then i you know he pulls me aside and goes bro you gotta you gotta do better with that you <laughs> yeah, know like you gotta, yeah you get know, around the edges a little yeah, bit man <laughs> and, and then i take a step back and go wow i guess i can see why they might take that differently than i said it you know yeah. and so I'm, I'm really working hard to try that to you know be better with that aspect of it um you know with coworkers, like texting, can, like texting, texting. Can, and emails can be funny in general because yep. you never know how the person's saying it when you know how a person is face to face and how they are and then you read a text or an email from them you're like oh i can just picture how he said that you know and, <laughs> and to sarah's point she's like you should feel honored that he actually asked us for a bid and we're sure. down here in naples and i was like yeah you know you're right uh, yeah. but that's something I got to work on. <laughs> well, you know, and it, it just comes with, you know, it just comes with being in the business. You know, you're going to run into those issues along the way. Um, so just a, a couple more questions here. I know we got to wrap it up pretty quick, but um, I, I, one thing that I admire about you is your willingness to get trained. It's something that I'm taught a lot about. I'm in a lot of training events. Um, I, I've noticed, you know, the PPF, the certification, the, the coding certifications, um, you know, that's something that looks like that, that it looks like you value pretty, pretty big, huh? Yeah. I mean, I, I look at it like you're building your resume. Like when I started six years ago, nobody knew who I was. I didn't know how to buff. I didn't know, you know, steamers, extractor. I, I didn't really know any of that stuff. So I literally just day by day, just continued to learn another thing and something new and, you know, uh, added on doing touch up pain. I'm like, Oh, how hard can that be? You know, just little, <laughs> you know, and I literally just kind of, <laughs> 
continue to just keep trying to learn more and do more. But like, you know, when I walk a customer into the shop and, you know, they see that wall and they're like, oh, wow, you know, how many schools have you been to? And, and yada, yada, you know, they appreciate that. And it's like, you know, it's just like building a, mes- a resume. Like I'm in the IDA. I got my CDSB certification. Love it. I've Love trained it. at, you know, at, with Rennie at Right Look, with Mike Phillips, with IGL yeah. Aviation, you, you know, like as yep. much as possible. Because I want to learn from everybody who, who has more knowledge than me. And, you know, like I, when I first came to Mobile Tech for the first time, you know, like I've seen how people looked at Justin Lobato at like, you know, like he's like, they got a statue of, my, of him in mobile yeah. tech. That's my guy, by the way, shout out Dustin. <laughs> what, yeah. You know, like, and I'm like, damn, I want to be that dude. Like, I want people to know my name, you know? And right. uh, with working on what we're working on, I'm like, you know, hey, we have a good shot here of being noticed. And so I just continuously. Oh, you good, I just good. Con- you good, we got you. Okay, I just continuously just balls to the wall six, seven days a week. You know, I, I live for this. Like, I'm just, you know, that just fuels me. I don't know. So now to kind of have a decent following and, and be asked to come on here and do things like this, I'm completely honored. I mean, you know, yeah. Jesus, God. Keep- <laughs> so you're adding uh, extra shoes and watches to the arsenal as you get bigger and bigger, I imagine. Yeah. Yes. I'm actually looking at a personal vehicle now because I've always just had a work truck. Okay. Um, and now that we're continuing to grow, um, I'm trying to look for a nice little car so that this way I can give the employees the trucks and I can be able to drive to the shop and, you know, so yeah. stay tuned. Maybe I'll now, pull up. Is this going to be another something. check on your goal list? Is it that car yeah. that you're going for? Look at you. All right. Then. Yes. So All right. That's, that's the last one on the list to check off, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, and I did awesome. that list. I did that like six or eight months ago. So like the fact wow. that I was able to do that, like as quick as it happened, I mean, and it's crazy because, you know, my friend David Elliott, he's like, I started listening to Grant Cardone. And instead of listening mm-hmm. to music while working, I'm listening to like audio books occasionally on business. And go. so I wrote this list out. He's like, write this list out like this stuff's already happened. And mm-hmm. I was like, OK, I'm going to have mobile trucks and a shop. I'm going to earn over 500 K a year in sales. I want to have yeah. a luxury car. I want to give back to the community. And like, boom, within six months, that's been done. The only that's- thing I need to cross off is the car. And, and, you know, listen, that that's exactly, exactly the way it's done. People think that, you know, oh, you know, just because you think it, it's going to happen or you just, you know, like, it, it, you know, it'll eventually happen, but you've got to write it down. you got to get specific and you speak it into existence. You literally, yeah. you write Manifest it down it. as if it, yeah, you write it down as if it existed already and you consume yourself with it. And then what I do even further is, is I just start to break that down as to what is it going to take me to get there? And I'm a very goal driven person. I like to have the target on the wall, something to shoot at, I, you know, to, to not have something to measure how, you know, so I work hard, I work hard every day. And, but I like to be able to see that. I like to see the results and the measure yeah. and be able to, you know, give, give credit to it. So I look, when you, when I saw that post, I was like, hell yeah, man, he gets it. He gets yeah. it. And uh, it, it inspires me to just keep doing, you know. And there's no secret sauce either. It's work, yeah, go hard out there work. and work. Every day, all day. Yes. <laughs> value, value yourself, value your yeah. services, know what to, you know, what to charge people. Don't do all this work for free. Give people that's what right. they're paying for and continue to grind and hustle until you're there. And that's really all there is to it, in my opinion. Love it, man. Love it. Look, dude, we got to jump off here. Uh, before we leave, tell everybody where they can find you at Facebook, social media, that, that kind of thing. So you can find us on Instagram or Facebook at So Fresh and So Clean Detailers, Clean. LLC clean clean yeah yeah <laughs> and, we're, and we're also on linkedin as well um our website www.sofreshsocleandetailers.com and you can you can schedule through detail bookie on our website powered by Woo-hoo. detail bookie baby i love yes, it love Mike it drop. man that's great hey, dude, dude. I love always it, man. always fun to talk to you man you keep killing it out there dude we follow you closely we're proud of you dude we're here for your support if you ever need anything reach out you're an inspiration to all and uh i, I love everything you got going man keep can't wait it. to see you down at mte man that's that's gonna be awesome look at that Ooh, look at that here. baby right there I'm glad I'm here. end it off with this big boy now that's the mic uh, drop right there all right big dog we'll see you later right. man it's absolutely beautiful Let's uh let's go ahead and jump off and we'll wrap this show up. Thank you, guys, brothers. Thanks for having me. Good seeing See you, you again, man. You too. Peace.
there. Okay, so this would normally be Ryan. How awesome is he, man? Oh, dude, I'm telling you, that that <laughs> dude right there knows what's up. Uh, and, and you knew it at, when we were at SDC. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We knew before he won the award. Just watching him go booth to booth, and man, yeah, just man. soaking up every bit of of every you know all the knowledge that was there. He wasn't you know it was his. He was gonna get it all. Well, and, it's just like I said, he gets it. He he yeah. understands. There is no there's humbleness and and saying I don't know everything i'm not the and and let me go find the people that do or that they know more than i do and, and pick their ear listen to what they have to say and then take it in and then figure out how that fits into your business or into your yeah. lifestyle and then put it in place so man i think it's absolutely awesome uh we got to change it up though ryan we don't have our graphics for hacker hack we don't have our video so what i want to do is just know that next week we'll be back on set we'll have the rest of our stuff um you know back to normal so we'll have our video of our paint gauge that was sent to us by next tag and uh we will uh we'll show it there so the hack is going to be cool as shit but it'll be next week oh man i didn't know that i could probably share the video oh well, but it's all we'll do that next time yeah sure absolutely so um also as far as who's going to be on the show next week uh I guess what we'll have to do is draw that maybe Monday and then we or actually you know. Have... Yeah. So we know who's okay. going to be on next week. Um, we have uh, Kyle Grissard from uh, 180 Detailing. Oh, yeah, Dude is, yeah, is yeah. just awesome. killing it out there. Yep. And um, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull the name. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll go live or something, you know, uh, early yeah. next week to pull that name. We'll figure yeah, it out. Let's, let's, let's do that, guys. Hey, I appreciate everybody sticking around for our show. I know it's a little discombobulated at first. We came in a little late, but hey, that's things happen. And, uh, and and just like in any other business or any other production or anything like that, you know, you're always dealing with elements and things out of our control. And that's exactly what happened today. But of course, Miss Jessica kicked ass as always, got us uh, working through the back end of it. And uh, hey, we'll move on. Love the shades, Ryan. Hey, <laughs> All right, buddy. Dog life, hey, baby. enjoyed the show with you, brother. I appreciate you jumping in while you're out of the office. Uh, love you, brother, and uh, we'll see you next week. Y'all have a great one.